Why does the intensive care unit use mean arterial pressure while everyone else uses systolic and diastolic blood pressure? My name is Ken Hoffman. I'm an intensive care specialist at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. We're going to review why the ICU uses mean arterial pressure, or MAP, as a target for hemodynamics. This video is aimed at those sitting the Australian and New Zealand College of Intensive Care Medicine primary exam to give a guideline as to the expected level of knowledge. There are four reasons why the ICU uses MAP for measurement and monitoring of blood pressure. 1. Tissue perfusion pressure. 2. Arterial line calibration. 3. Distal pulse amplification. And 4. The accuracy of a non-invasive automated blood pressure cuff. We will review each of these factors. Firstly, and most importantly, is the tissue perfusion pressure. Blood flow to an organ is proportional to the pressure gradient and inversely proportional to the resistance. Pressure gradient, or the delta P, is also called perfusion pressure. This is the difference between the arterial and venous pressures. As the arterial pressure is so much higher than venous pressure, perfusion occurs throughout the cardiac cycle. Therefore, it is the mean pressure that is the most important determinant of perfusion. Mean pressure is also less dependent on vessel compliance. Imagine we pump the same volume of blood into two vessels with each heartbeat. A vessel with poor compliance will have much higher systolic pressure and much lower diastolic pressure than a vessel with an elastic wall that can stretch and contract to accommodate the volume. The mean pressure in both cases should be the same. Therefore, systolic pressure is much more affected by poor vessel compliance due to atherosclerosis in comparison with the mean arterial pressure. The second point relates to the frequent use of invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring systems, or ART lines, in the intensive care unit. As we discussed in a previous video, arterial lines require both static and dynamic calibration. Dynamic calibration, which includes resonance and damping can affect the accuracy of measurements of the arterial line system. In the presence of resonance or suboptimal damping, the mean arterial pressure remains relatively stable in comparison to the values measured for systolic and diastolic blood pressure. The third reason is an effect called distal pulse amplification. Due to this effect, the further from the heart the blood pressure is measured, the higher the systolic blood pressure will be. Wait, if the pressure is higher, further from the heart, wouldn't that mean blood would flow in the reverse direction, back to the heart? What is happening is something called wave interference. As the pressure wave arrives at very small vessels, there is a reflected wave which bounces back in the other direction. The further away you are from the heart, the earlier this reflected wave bounces back each cardiac cycle. In very small vessels like dorsalis pedis, this reflected wave lands on top of the systolic wave and has an additive effect on the peak pressure, even though the reflected wave itself is travelling in the opposite direction. Mean arterial pressure, on the other hand, decreases very slightly as we move to smaller peripheral vessels. This is what we would expect to see as blood flows from the heart out to the periphery with a pressure gradient. Because of distal pulse amplification, the systolic pressure in small vessels can be falsely reassuring compared with the more stable mean arterial pressure. The fourth reason why mean arterial pressure is preferred over systolic and diastolic blood pressure relates to the now widespread use of automated non-invasive blood pressure cuffs. Automated cuffs inflate to a pressure above the systolic blood pressure and then gradually let the pressure out of the cuff. As the pressure in the cuff reduces, they monitor for oscillations in pressure within the cuff as it's deflating. The point of maximum pressure oscillation, 
correlates with the mean arterial pressure. The point at which the oscillations in pressure have decreased by 80% compared with the maximum oscillations is considered the diastolic pressure. What about the systolic blood pressure? How is that calculated? Well, this is the least accurate measurement reported by the machine. Different brands do this differently. They either guess what the systolic blood pressure is, using the point at which the oscillations are between 25 to 50% of the maximum value, or they calculate it using the equation mean arterial pressure equals diastolic blood pressure plus one third pulse pressure. This means that systolic blood pressure as measured on a non-invasive blood pressure cuff is the least accurate measurement reported by the machine. We should therefore be using the mean arterial pressure for titration of our drugs in the intensive care unit. So, to recap what we've talked about. Firstly, mean arterial pressure is used in the intensive care unit as it is the most accurate way of monitoring the tissue perfusion pressure. Secondly, mean arterial pressure is less affected by suboptimal arterial line dynamic calibration than systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Third, mean arterial pressure remains stable despite changes in the systolic blood pressure due to distal pulse amplification. Finally, mean arterial pressure is actually the most accurate measurement we get from an automated non-invasive blood pressure cuff. Thank you for listening. If this video was useful, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel.